What is good everybody? I'm just tuning into the beginning of the video to let you guys know that today is my birthday. <laughs> huh. Well that was dumb as fuck. What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. We have a thought-based opinion damn stuff. So today, guys, uh, you know, we're gonna get into, you know, my damn thoughts. I've had a lot of people always approach me. I've actually had the idea in my head beforehand to come up with a new series called My Damn Thoughts and just tell you guys my personal opinions about some controversial topics in wrestling in general and just give my own feedback on anything happening in wrestling, whatever. You know, I give my damn thoughts in all my reviews, all my predictions, all my everything, but I thought about creating a new series where I just, you know, pretty much give my damn thoughts on anything wrestling related. And before we dive into today's video and topic, which you guys already know, I do want to give a huge congratulations to the man, Becky Lynch, and Seth Rollins for their child that is obviously on the way. Becky Lynch announced her pregnancy last night on Monday Night Raw as of recording, so huge congratulations to her and Seth. And she did have to surrender the Raw Women's Championship to Asuka, who did win the Women's Money in the Bank at Money in the Bank this year at time of recording this, which was two days ago. So congratulations to Asuka. I love Asuka. I'm very happy she won the Money in the Bank. I'm very happy happy that she's champion. However, I will say I thought it was a bit lazy for her to just get the championship like that. I feel like they could have done a tournament. They could have done a lot more creative things with that instead of, you know, just gifting her the championship or something like that. But I guess it made for a cool moment. It was a touching moment for Becky to come out and announce it. I hate there were no fans and stuff, but, you know, it is what it is. We got to go on with what we got. I mean, that's a whole situation in itself, and I'll probably make a whole video regarding that scenario later on, but that is not what this is about. I did want to congratulate Seth and Becky on that because I love both of them so much. But here today, guys, we're here to talk about the money in the bank, okay? We're here to talk about the money in the bank. I'm going to get Asuka out of here, even though she was a money in the bank this year. We are going to be discussing today, guys, as we know, money in the bank has been around for a little while, okay? It all started back in 2005, WrestleMania 21. Money in the bank ladder match. The idea was proposed by Chris Jericho that all these guys would get in the ring, have a big old ladder match for a money in the bank contract that would hang high above the ring. First guy to get that contract could cash in that opportunity at any time to win the championship up to a full 365 day calendar year. Now when this idea was first pitched, I think I was 9 years old I think watching this show. I was either 8 or 9 years old and I was a huge Benoit fan at the time. I was a huge John Cena fan at the time. I was a huge Chris Jericho fan at the time and I just remember it like it was yesterday. Watching that first Money in the Bank ladder match, I loved it. I thought it was terrific. We had some of the, some of the great spots that we even remember today in that first ladder match. Shelton Benjamin rings a bell. I always loved him growing up. And ever since that time, guys, we have seen so many different things take place with the money in the bank. So what I'm answering today is, has money in the bank ran its collective creative course? Now what I mean by that is, if you're thinking, what the hell does that mean? I'm saying, like, should WWE do away with the money in the bank? Has it pretty much done its job? It's been around since 2005. It's, it's 2020 now. We've seen so many different cash-ins, moments, failed cash-ins, uh, you know, big-time cash-ins, not-so-good cash-ins, people announcing their cash-ins. I mean, we've literally seen it from every creative angle. How many more ways can you book it? And if you look at it from this year, and I'm not on either side of the fence in this video, I'm going to give you a case for why and why not. So don't think that this is just me saying, oh, money in the bank should come to an end, Brad. I don't like that money in the bank. That's not what I'm saying at all. Because I love money in the bank, as you guys know. It's one of my favorite stipulations ever since its inception. Next to the Royal Rumble and the Elimination Chamber, which will also get into. So Money in the Bank, the idea kind of popped in my head after Steinsenberg, my boy Cody, brought it to my attention. He said, you know, I think they should kind of do away with the Money in the Bank. And that kind of sat with me. I thought to myself, I was like, you know what, Brad? That's not, you know, that's not an insane idea. Now, I'm not for it or against it. I'm just saying, let's talk about it and find out what we're saying here. So the only reason that really I wanted to make a video is just given the circumstances that we have faced with this year's Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank 2020, we saw the most insane 
insane Money in the Bank ladder match we've ever seen as far as, you know, booking and the way it was filmed and the way they did things and the different moments and stuff. It was unlike any other Money in the Bank. They put the damn thing on top of a building and had people run through the freaking headquarters of WWE to get to the contract. Now, it's definitely the most insane one they've ever done as far as that's concerned. It's usually, you know, you just go down to the ring in a big arena, a bunch of ladders are flying around, guys just doing crazy spots, and somebody gets the contract, which is the way it probably should be done, but you know what? Given the circumstances this year, they wanted to do something different, and I will nod the cap saying, you know, it was different, there was a surprise and all that, but was it so far outside the box where it gets too goofy to where it's just like, what the hell's going on? Because not that, like, yeah, you can take Otis winning with what you will. I honestly wouldn't have picked him myself, but, you know, I'm not the most excited for it, but you know what? We're just going to see how this thing goes. I wouldn't pick him. I don't necessarily am hyped at, at all for it, but that's besides the point. I'm talking about everything leading up to that point with all the comedy and all the jokes and everything, which is great. I love comedy and entertainment and humor and all that is very valuable in wrestling. I think it is what, you know, can take wrestling and set it apart from other things instead of just, oh, it's it got to be serious at all times. You know, it can lighten things up. Our truth is a good example. I mean, there's a million good examples over the years. I'm just saying our truth is a good example for this for this spot that we're in right now. Now, when you take something comical like that and you put it in the money in the bank, it's like, you know, the money in the bank is supposed to be this prestigious award that everybody goes for. And, and it's supposed to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. You get that contract. It can change the course of your career forever. Look at Edge and what he did from that moment at 2005. It pretty much propelled him into stardom. I know he was great before with the tag teams and the singles and the stuff like that. But him winning that money in the bank thrusted him into the limelight and it made him when he cashed in and he became this way bigger star. The rated R superstar embodied him and he he never slowed down from there on out. So when you take the jokes and you put it together with your main event championship, it's like well, do, like if, they, if they're joking about their main championship, like why the hell am I going to care if they don't care? You get what I'm saying? And I, I've said this for years, you guys know on the channel, I have talked about how WWE really doesn't give a shit. They they literally just throw shit at the wall. They, they really don't care. Most things are just for, for shits and giggles. I honestly don't think they plan ahead most of the time. You'll get, you know, a golden nugget every once in a while. For, for the most part, for the majority, most of the storylines are repetitive. There's not a lot of substance in it. You know, we get our great moments here and there, but for majority, I would say over 60% of the stuff they put out, 70% of the stuff they put out, it isn't that good. So leading into the Money in the Bank, guys, I mean, Money in the Bank is classic, right? It's classic. If I had my way, I would not get rid of it. I think that it's just like the Royal Rumble. Obviously, the Royal Rumble, you can compare it then. It's like, well, if we get rid of the Money in the Bank, you got to get rid of the Royal Rumble. You got to get rid of the Elimination Chamber. Because, I mean, we've done that for years. Royal Rumble has been around longer than Money in the Bank. And we do that every single year. The winner gets a championship opportunity at WrestleMania. And if you're going to get rid of the Money in the Bank, why don't you just get rid of the Royal Rumble? I don't think they would do that, even if they got rid of Money in the Bank. But I did a poll on my Instagram, and I actually asked my audience, and I asked them, I said, you know, has Money in the Bank ran its creative course? And I think like 60 or 70 percent of people, I'll pull it up on the screen, they actually admitted that it has ran its creative course. Now, I don't know if that necessarily means, you know, get rid of it or whatever. I mean, we've seen every, I, I feel like the Royal Rumble has kind of ran its creative course, but I feel like you can't really change that. Money in the Bank has given us so many epic moments. You had Edge with his first cash in, Seth Rollins saving the main event of WrestleMania 31. You had women winning the, the you know, getting the briefcase nowadays. We had Trash Corbin's terrible ass winning. We had people cash in on the same night. We had one of the best cash ins ever with my boy Dolph Ziggler. We had the Brock Party, two time winner over here in CM Punk. Kevin Owens should be up here, by the way. I just want to mention that again. He should have been a Money in the Bank winner by now. But all I'm saying is that uh, once you've done something so many times, like how many more ways can they do it? But I guess, again, it's in the same realm as the Royal Rumble. So I honestly don't know what to think of it. I'm just giving you guys my own personal opinions on the background knowledge, on you know what we've seen, what we've got now from the first one all the way up until now. We don't know what Otis is going to do with the briefcase. You know, he may hold it forever. Apparently, he's going to cash in for the tag titles. I don't know how I feel about that, but you know, it is what it is. It's supposed to be a world championship contract, but you know, I, I don't know. I've even made the case maybe one time for a tag team uh, Money in the Bank. I thought that'd be pretty creative. Change it up a little bit. But Money in the Bank has given us some epic moments. I love, you know, the, just the, you're holding your breath waiting for that Money in the Bank to cash in, which is so sick. It's made for great memes. I mean, it, it is just one of the greatest things ever. But I think I found it pretty shocking that people have said it has ran its creative course. And I think they just mean that they've seen it all. I mean, we've seen failed cash ins, the great moments, the shit moments, the, 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 the epitome of good, and we've seen the epitome of bad. I'm looking at you, bitch. But I don't know. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments section below. We've seen this match over and over and over and over again, and I 
wanted to put it up to you guys, but I don't know. Maybe they can change up the formatting. I don't know but about you guys, but I'm just ready for this damn quarantine BS to be lifted. I'm ready for live shows again. I feel like WWE has fallen off even more now that the shows are empty. They're just so hard to sit through. It's just the same garbage. There's no even life to the shows because there's no crowd there. I don't know, man. We're, we're just going to have to get into it, but I would love to know what you think down in the comment section below, guys. Do you think Money in the Bank has ran its creative course? Should they get rid of Money in the Bank? What do you guys think? down in the comment section below. I mean, have we seen every possible way? Possibly, but I feel the same way about the Royal Rumble. You can tell great stories with the Money in the Bank. It's always a golden ticket in your back pocket for a great storyline. You can do so many things with the briefcase. It could change hands. I feel like uh, they could do some different creative elements with it. It doesn't have to be the same ish every single year, but I love Money in the Bank, man. I don't, I don't think I could change it if I wanted to. It's just so excellent. Maybe not the last six years, but you know, Dean Ambrose was cool and you know it is what it is he just didn't hold on to the contract that's my favorite part man you know you're holding your breath like oh shit is he gonna cash in oh shit brad but i don't know man let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about this i would love to know but i'm getting the hell out of here i'm gonna go celebrate my birthday i guess thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel for more epic wwe action figure videos follow me on instagram and twitter my name toys and i will see you guys in the next video thank you